Now this illustration deals with a concrete encased electrode, the old Eufer ground, uh, some folks used to call it. In accordance with NEC 250.52A31 and A32. Now, before we get into this in detail, let, let's review the notes first that kind of highlight what's taking place here. And note one, the extended rebar must be subject to uh, corrosion. Uh, it must not be really, but if it is, then we have to uh, uh, provide some kind of protection from corrosion in accordance with uh, uh, 250 uh, dot, I believe it's 68C3A through C as in car. Now note, note two says if multiple electrodes are present, only one has to be bonded to the grounding electrode system per 250.52A3. And uh, notice we have method uh, one that we'll look at, and we'll look at the methods, but first let's complete the notes. Note three, rebar shall not be used to bond and interconnect the electrodes of the grounding electrode system per 250.53 C as in car. Now notice method one, we have the steel through the bolts, threaded bolts going down, then they kind of make a 90 degree turn and they're bolt, bolted in to the uh, concrete encased electrode that uh, goes down and connects as you see in method two. So we're bonding the bolts that are bonding the structural steel to the concrete encased electrode through vertical rebar connected to horizontal rebar. In the illustration to the right now, we're just taking a grounding electrode conductor and connecting it into the rebar. So it would have to be a number four by 250.66B, but the concrete encased electrode has to comply with 250.52A3. So in other words, the rebar has to be half inch in diameter or greater, 20 foot in length, unbroken, continuous, or spliced together to create 20 foot, or it encircles the entire foundation. Now, uh, the, this little illustration arrives pretty good. Uh, again, let's just use four alt conductors because we've been consistently using four alt. Four alt coming into a 225 amp main, then everything in that panel board, the grounded conductor from the transformer, windings without an overcurrent device ahead of those conductors connected to that uh, main bar with a main bonding jumper would have to be number two. If, for example, you had two standard lock nuts and bushing, metal bushing, with a lug on it, that bonding jumper would be number two also. But notice uh, when we look at 70B 15.9.9, then it says as electrician, maintenance or construction, I would look inside that panel board and I would say, why do we have number four in here? They all should be the same size. Well, that would be true only if the grounding electrode conductor was connected to structural steel or a metal water pipe. Since it's connected to the concrete encased electrode, it could be number four uh, uh, sizing uh, in accordance with 250.66B. So in this case, it could be a different size. Then notice what qualifies as a concrete encased electrode is listed at the very bottom right-hand side of that illustration. And it states, rebar shall be at least 20 foot or more in length or spliced together to form 20 foot or more in length or basically it could completely encircle the uh, foundation. So 250.52A31 along with A32 
would give the uh, designer or the installer of a concrete encased electrode the information that was uh, needed. Now, in uh, closing this out, notice that we can stub up with the uh, rebar, and that'd be okay, stub up and, and connect to it. That'd be our electrode. And the granting electrode would be the number four connected to the stubbed up rebar, or it could be a conductor uh, stubbed up. That uh, it, instead of rebar, it's a conductor, 20 foot or more strip bare, laid in uh, the foundation within two inches of the uh, bottom of the foundation. Now, uh, I believe the illustration illustrates the information that is needed to design properly a concrete encased electrode in accordance with NEC 250.52A31 through A32. And that's what our figure 16-67 is illustrating.